What is a stepped frequency radar signal? Well, radar involves sending a signal and having reflections come back and be received. And we can represent the reflections by a system with an impulse response. So if we were to send an ideal impulse at zero time, then the output, which we would be receiving from all of our reflections, would be the impulse response of that system. And for example, if there was only one reflector, then the impulse would come back to us at a delayed time. And we would have a receive signal that looks like this, where this delayed time here is Tor would equal two times the round trip delay divided by the speed of light. This would be an ideal situation, but it's really not practical to send an impulse. The power, instantaneous power needs to be incredibly high and the bandwidth is infinite if it's an exact impulse. And this is not practical. The dynamic range of an amplifier and the frequency response is just not feasible to have this in practice. So instead, let's think about sending a sine wave for a period of time. And in this case, the sine wave will come out delayed because there's we're thinking about having one reflector and it's going to be delayed by the same amount. And then you'll receive the sine wave here. And at the receiver, you will match this up with the transmitted waveform and you'll be able to measure the phase of the returning signal. And this phase is given by a relationship to that delay. And the phase will equal 2 pi f naught, where this signal here is sent at, signal, at frequency f naught, times that delay, 2r divided by c. And this is the phase of the returning signal that's come off one reflector. Of course, phase is something that is modulo 2 pi because uh, any cycle of this waveform, if we go through multiple cycles, we're not going to be able to tell the difference when we are measuring the phase. So this is actually the same as the, the, uh, that original phase plus uh, 2 pi k, any integer multiple of 2 pi on that original phase. So we're not going to be able to tell which exact value of r it is just by measuring the phase. We can think about this on a diagram here. Uh, if we plotting here the frequency and then the phase on the vertical axis, then we can see if we've measured at our frequency f naught, if we've measured the phase to be this value here, for example, we know that a simple delay of a signal gives a linear phase. And if you want to know more about linear phase, there's a video on the channel uh, related to video phase. Check the description below. But of course, what we can see is that is if we've just measured one point from having one frequency by sending one waveform, then we don't know if this has gone through a, a, a longer delay and in fact gone through this phase plus another two pi. So in this diagram here, two pi is three height. So that would be up there. This would correspond to a line which goes up to there. Of course, it stops at two pi and wraps back to zero and then carries on uh, at that same angle and gets us to the same point. So you can see the delay is related to this angle here. And you can see we can't tell the difference between a delay that gives this linear phase and a delay that gives this linear phase. And of course, any other one that also goes through this point with, with steeper angles on the phase. So you might ask, how much of a problem is this? How far would you have to move in order to have this ambiguity? Well, if we take an F naught of 500 megahertz, for example, a typical frequency for radar, and C is of course three by 10 to the eight, then we can see two times F naught divided by C equals 1.67. So therefore, you only have to move a distance r of the inverse of that, which is 0.6 meters, for you to change from one of these phases to the other one. So that's only 60 centimeters. So that tells you the resolution 
of this approach if you only have one frequency is you can have an ambiguity every 60 centimeters. So we really can't be having that as a practical waveform for radar. So just by measuring one frequency, we're not able to resolve the actual range. So naturally enough, this think of it like this, I think you'll agree that the first thing that would come to you is to think not just have one frequency. Let's think about multiple frequencies. And this is exactly the stepped frequency radar system. So here we have a waveform that now every capital T period of time, we're going to increase the frequency. So here this has three cycles in that period. This next one that I've drawn has four and so on up to a high frequency. And so we can increase the frequency, step, stepping increasing the frequency uh, as we go in time. We are of course going to use a longer period of time. So here we have the frequency is based on the original, the basic frequency plus this multiple of the delta F. And what that means is at the receiver, we are going to be getting a sequence of phases. So we'll get one phase for each of these frequencies and it'll give us a receive signal, which is a is, as indexed by M, one for each of these, which we can have an amplitude and a phase in our return. And so now when we think about this, we've got an amplitude and phase for each frequency. It's natural enough and anyone who's learnt about Fourier transforms will be able to tell you that the way to go back from having amplitude and phase in the frequency domain back to the time domain to find the impulse response, which is what we're looking for, is by doing an inverse discrete Fourier transform. Because we have discrete frequencies, we have amplitudes and phases for discrete frequencies because we did stepped, therefore we use an inverse discrete Fourier transform or inverse fast Fourier transform. They're the same thing uh, in terms of functionality. So we take our amplitudes and phase, put them through the inverse discrete Fourier transform, and we will get the discrete time version of our impulse response. So one of the disadvantages, of course, is that we're using a longer period of time, which means that this approach typically is not suitable for airborne radar systems. So typically use a different type of waveform for airborne radar. But for ground-based radar, such as ground penetration radar, for example, uh, radars where your target does not change very much, this is a very good approach and it's a very efficient implementation uh, using an inverse fast Fourier transform. So if this video has helped you to understand more about stepped frequency radar, give it a thumbs up, helps others to find the video. Check out the description below where you'll find a web page that has a full categorized listing of all the videos on the channel. And of course, subscribe to the channel for more videos.